here coming at you from a nice stadium that we discovered here in Plaza del Carmen. Pretty cool place to film a video and actually the whole place reminds me of childhood a little bit. I used to be pretty into soccer. I was playing every single day for hours and hours until I went to college. That's kind of when uh, old habits fall apart. I actually wrote a blog post about this which I'm gonna link in the description below. It's kind of my own personal transformation story, how I went to college, how everything kind of fell apart and then I rebuilt that, went into personal development and all of that. So make sure to check that blog post if you're interested in my personal transformation, it's gonna be linked in the description below. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys a bit about self-image. I wanna to talk to you a bit about identity, identity change, how do you create that lasting behavior change, which is really one of the most important, if not the most important things to know when it comes to changing your life, when it comes to getting into a more healthy lifestyle or in general becoming more successful. And all of us, I mean, we can figure out the how-tos. There's pretty much everything out there in terms of the actual information that you need to know how to do something. But then when it comes to lasting change, it's as if something is pulling us back from changing, as if there's something that is basically reverting back those changes as if we don't believe that we can achieve something. And this is very relevant to the self-image concept. I mean, I first figured this out when I was reading the book called The Psycho-Cybernetics from Maxwell Maltz, one of the best books out there that you can learn about the concept of self-image. And what it really comes down to is that we have certain beliefs of who we are. So who do we think we are? And the more we deviate from that, the more we are gonna come back to that. So this is something that, I mean, it's not just something that we created, but also, I mean, it's shifted and it's, it's morphed around throughout the life. And it's also something that you get from a little bit from your parents, you get a little bit from your school system, you get it from pretty much a combination of everything can create your self image. And a lot of people, I mean, let's give you a quick example here is that a lot of people think that they're not good at math, you know, and it could have all started just by you getting a comment in school, someone says, well, you don't seem like you're pretty good at math. You know, maybe you just didn't study well for an exam, but the teacher just said, well, maybe you're not cut out to be a good math student. And then you didn't really study that hard for the next exam. And what happened then, because you didn't study that hard, well, now that self-fulfilling prophecy, you didn't think you were good at math. Now you actually aren't good at math. You again got a, not a good grade. And then for the rest of your life, in a lot of cases, people think, okay, well, I'm not cut out to be uh, good at math. And that's something that it's not just when it comes to math. I mean, we can see, let's say in uh, weight loss journeys, people will follow a diet, you know, they will stick to a calorie deficit. They're gonna track their macros. They're gonna follow everything. They're gonna get great results within a matter of six to eight months. It's gonna be a huge transformation. But then after a while, it seems like they just bounce back to their previous self. And it's almost as if they're kind of swimming off the shore, which is kind of their comfort zone. And there's this anchor that is pulling them. And the further they're away from their comfort zone, which is kind of that old self, which didn't take care of their health, the harder it is to keep going further and further. And until they get rid of that anchor, which is that old self image, they're gonna be pulled down and they're gonna pretty much drown or go back to the shore. And that's what most people do. They go back to the shore and they regain the weight and basically they haven't made that lasting change. So that's why self-image is so important because we have all these limiting beliefs why something is bad, something is not good for us, we're not cut out for something. And I'm not saying here that everybody can be LeBron James, I'm not saying that everybody can be Kobe Bryant. Of course, there's a lot of things playing a role when it comes to success. It's not just about hard work. I mean, you can read about this in the book uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, he talks about many different factors that play a role when it comes to becoming more successful. But the point is that you can get pretty good at a lot of things. You know, most people can get pretty good at most things and I'm not talking about world-class elite level, but with a little bit of practice, with thousands and thousands of hours of practice, you can get pretty damn good at anything. And when it comes to, let's say at least your weight loss or becoming the best version of yourself through expressing yourself in the gym, becoming stronger and all these other things, you get pretty damn good at that. I mean, you might not look exactly like some famous bodybuilder or whoever your role model is, but you can become the best version of yourself. And that is the version of yourself that is gonna look fantastic, right? Compared to what you look right now, right? That's who you wanna be comparing yourself with is yourself. 
But going back to the self-image, I'm not going to rant too much about the, self, the comparison uh, paradigm. That's something that is definitely a trap with a lot of people when it comes to health and fitness and just these physique goals. But when we talk about self-image, what can we do about that self-image? Because we know that it can be holding us back. So what are some of the tools and from my experience, uh, what I've noticed is how is it even possible to change that self-image? I mean, we know that a lot of people are not willing to kind of give up their old self. You know, a lot of people just want to do a temporary fix and then they can go back to their old self. So here's a couple of ways that I've kind of, um, from my anecdotal experience, just going through a personal transformation and from being a coach of uh, dozens and dozens of guys who went through transformations, what works? So number one is an epiphany right, an epiphany, some kind of uh, even traumatic experience, some kind of emotional experience. I mean, logic doesn't really change our behavior. Logic doesn't create lasting change, but emotions do. And a lot of things that um, people, when they go through hard times, when they have a traumatic experience or a very positive experience, some kind of epiphany, they have an easier time making that change. And this is something I've experienced myself is once that a leverage point hit in my life when I was really unhappy with pretty much everything I was doing. At that point, I actually made the decision to change and I think that that leverage that I had actually gave me that initial fuel until I've built those habits that kind of resulted in me changing that self-image as well as the fact is that because of that leverage and because I realized that my old self-image was holding me back, now I, had, I knew that I had to change it. I knew I had to change and give up who I was. And that's something that a lot of us aren't willing to do. We're not willing to give up things because change is hard. Getting outside of your comfort zone, it means changing, right? I mean, anytime you try to do a change, even try to just shifting a couple of exercises in your workout plan, all of a sudden it feels a little bit weird. You know, it just feels weird. It feels uncomfortable. It feels uncommon. It feels like something new. And usually new things scare us, even though th there's nothing to be afraid of. New things can be somewhat generating that fear. We don't really know why, but we're just creatures of habit. We're just creatures that love habit. We love to kind of remain the same. We love that homeostatic uh, position, right? That's what our body strives for as well. So traumatic experience, epiphanies, things like pushing yourself outside the comfort zone really, really work uh, well when it comes to changing your self-image. I mean, putting, uh, kind of jumping in the deep end of the pool. When it comes to weight loss, this is, uh, let's say, people who uh, go through kind of a emotional experience where they kind of analyze their life and they try to seek that leverage of, of trying to dig deep into their selves and find that emotional leverage for change. This can work really, really well. And then you set a goal, make that decision, you stick with that decision because now you have all that leverage. But the thing with the, that, that try, with that finding that emotional leverage is not that easy because a lot of people they would rather lie to themselves and they will not be very, very honest with themselves. They're gonna be just good enough not to make that change. And that's the, that's the problem, right? Good enough, as soon as you kind of reach that simple threshold of being good enough, you're not really interested in making a change anymore, with not at least a big change, because now it's okay, you know, you're kind of okay. And if you look at it, most people are okay. And most people are, just at that level where they don't need to invest that much time and they're just thinking well i can just delay that infinitely until i kind of uh, until until i kind of get into a better situation of course the better situation never comes if at least when you're talking about starting an exercise plan or a diet plan i mean the best time to start is exactly right now there's in the future it's just going to get harder and harder as you age so uh, when we look at that and uh, the first type of change that traumatic experience is that the problem there is that this actually requires a lot of self-awareness and a lot of emotional intelligence you have to know yourself you have to do this for the right reasons you have to find your strong why and you have to build that emotional leverage over time and this is something that you have to do yourself and it's a really really hard process it's really hard to sit down and really be honest with yourself and this is something where coaches help and coaches can help you discover that the second way to make um, that change last and the second way to kind of change your self-image is through building tiny little habits and uh, this is kind of my preferred way i'm kind of gravitating more away from that uh, traumatic experience epiphany type of uh, method because the tiny habit seems to be a bit more sustainable and what is the tiny habits thing have to do with self-image well 
let's put it like this. Let's say you haven't been exercising at all. Let's say you're the type of person that doesn't go to the gym. And now you said to yourself, well, I'm gonna go to the gym for 15 minutes every single day, or let's say four days a week or five days a week. Even though those 15 minutes in the gym aren't gonna be the best workout in the world, do you know what I mean? If you do an hour, of course, you're gonna get the better results. But what you're doing by just the fact that you're following a plan is that now you're proving to yourself that you are the type of person that goes to the gym. You are the type of person, you have that self-image and you are the type of person that doesn't miss a workout because you're not asking so much compliance of yourself. I mean, 10, 15 minutes is not a big deal. And similarly, building tiny habits around food, such as let's say I'm gonna use my fitness pal over the weekends or I'm gonna eat protein with every meal or I'm gonna eat veggies with every meal. Now all of a sudden, you're building that identity of a person who is eating healthy food. And as long as you stick to those tiny habits, which is not really that hard because they're not so big, you are reinforcing that identity, you are investing in that identity more and more, and the more you invest into something, the more it's gonna stick, and the more you're investing in that lasting behavior change. Because uh, the more, let's say, you become skilled in gym, the more your physique you get, gets uh, changed in a positive direction in terms of body composition, the stronger you get, now you're gonna be seeking for more opportunities to express that strength. Because we as human beings, we love to express things that we're good at and we love to express our identity and it's something that we're really proud of. And if you talk to, let's say, a couple of friends and, uh, uh, who are, let's say, vegans, vegetarians, and that's a part of their identity and it's actually not even a question whether they're gonna do something or not, or whether they're gonna, let's say, eat meat or not. It's not even a question because that's just a part of who they are. And that's kind of similarly with, in my case, when it comes to gym, I mean, you can't keep me out of the gym. You know, I feel bad when I don't go there because I'm just the type of person that just goes to the gym six days a week. You know, I'm, that's a part of my identity. And I've chosen that identity for myself. I've invested in that identity. And that's why it is a part of who I am right now. It wasn't always like this. And it took a while to build that up. It took a ton of effort, a ton of reps, a ton of tiny little habits. But the more I invested in this, the more and, and easier was it to stick with that and that's how I ended up in a situation today where if I miss a couple of healthy meals, if I don't get my veggies that day, I truly uh, feel that um, shift and that change now is becoming hard. That change from, let's say, quote unquote, good to bad is becoming hard because the quote unquote, good um, behaviors are now the default, right? So now I'm working that, that homeostasis that I have right now are the good habits. And that's now it's hard to change those good habits into bad ones because I've invested so much into that thing. So the change is really hard in both directions. It's not just hard to go from uh, quote unquote bad to good. It's also hard to go from good to bad because we're just the, the type of uh, being that is really a slave to habits. We're a slave to repetition. We're, we're slaves to those um, kind of those daily things that we're doing. And we're, it's really hard to get ourselves outside of a routine. And that's uh, kind of one thing that I really love, things that push me outside of my comfort zone is because it makes me feel more alive. It makes me feel a little bit more uncomfortable. And this is a huge topic. I mean, I'm gonna do a lot more videos on self-image and this is something I just wanted to share with you guys here. It's not super fine, not like step by step, but it's just some of the ideas that I had recently on this uh, concept. And I think it's super, super important for us to become aware of this. And the way you wanna look at this really is that every time you kind of prove to yourself that you're not a slave of your self-image, if you wanna change that self-image, you're actually winning. You're actually getting one more rep in a positive direction. So what do I mean by this? Well, every time you do go to the gym, you've kind of proven to yourself that you are the type of person that goes to the gym. Every time you eat healthy, you've proven to yourself now that there is none of that limiting belief there that you're not the type of person who's, eating, uh, who's not eating healthy, right? So you are proving to yourself constantly with repetition what type of identity you have. And that's a very, very important thing to hear to realize is that every single rep you do is an investment in either a positive direction or going backwards to that old self-image. So keep that in mind. And it's really about a cumulative effect. It's about a compound effect of all these reps. Once you put them all together, that's where magic happens. That's where true change happens. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below how you resonate with this. And aside from that, make sure to that subscribe button below to support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.